So right now I'm just trying to figure out how I can actually fit these drums in here. And it's a tight squeeze. All right, so as you know, most of my videos so far have been like talking head, uh, just giving you information uh, videos. And those are pretty time consuming. You gotta plan a lot of stuff out. And honestly, I don't have that much time. So I've got to kind of bring you into my world as a composer and start making these videos while I'm working on real things, like these tracks I'm doing right now. This week, I do want to talk about one thing, and that is drums. First, we got to go somewhere and pick up my drums. So here we go. tape room. Let's see what's inside. Hello. So tell me about how long you've been in this space, bud. So we built this space. It used to be a hair salon that hadn't changed from the 60s and the owner retired and so we got it. There used to be hair washing stations here. There was no wall here. Um, those were all cutting seats with these big mirrors and uh, we did a reno and we sold all of those things to other people in the community that wanted them. There's still a, a barber's chair back there that we kept. But yeah, this is my room. This is Studio A and we have the Trident, which is a 1970s Trident. Um, the guy I bought it from was in East Nashville and he produced um, Fergie London Bridges something and that was like his big claim and so he upgraded to a Neve console because he had the money Heck yeah. so I got this for a steal and then we modded channels one through eight with API chips uh, for a much punchier sound so that's kind Ooh. of like our dedicated uh, drum sounds and then nine through 16 is all original to spec we found um, everything that we needed or we pulled them from other channels and just gave it that true trident sound and then everything over here is tied into it. So if you just want to plug into the room, everything goes directly into the Trident, back into the Apollo, and then you can kind of break out and use other stuff. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So did you do a lot of the work on the studio yourself? Yeah, me and my partner Beach, we did all the work. I uh, had a little help on framing on the heavy stuff, but yeah, everything was was done ourselves. There's so much foam in here. There's ten, <laughs> 10 inches of foam is the entire ceiling with fabric. And then we have the base traps, double walls um, with a two foot air gap, everything at an angle. Everything is double drywall, um, half inch and five eighths. And then in here, oh, and the whole back wall is foam as well. So it's a small room. So diffusion didn't really make sense. So we just kind of decided to make everything as tight as possible so that we have like a really clear center image and then we can kind of learn to deal with any base issues or anything like that that arise. Yeah, man. Um, but yeah, there's the tracking room. It's 20 by 16 um, with some, some quirky angles. Um, we didn't know this fireplace was here. We found it in the demo, so we just kind of refurbished it a little bit so it didn't fall down. That's amazing. And, uh, yeah, I like it. But yeah, this is it. And then we're building on this room right here. We had a front patio that we're now turning into our piano room. So we're going to have our Hammond organ over here, our upright piano here with yes. the Leslie. And then it'll also just be like a total dead room for vocals. And then you could see through the glass and have a better live band recording. Heck yeah. Yeah. And I know I've recorded drums here before, and it sounds incredible. And this Ludwig kit is great. So yeah, thank you Kyle for showing us around and uh, yeah, I'll we'll see you later. Cool. All right, I got my drums and I'm headed back to the studio to, uh, I'm gonna set up in the control room and we're gonna record some drums, these songs that I've been working on. So 
I've gotten all the way back to the house and this is the wrong leg for the floor top. So I'm gonna have to either rig something up or find the right one. All right, so I've decided to go with four mics. Uh, so we have a stereo pair and XY. I've got a snare mic, which is just an SM57. And if you point it just right under the rim at the shell, you can get a full sound out of the snare drum with just one mic instead of doing top and bottom. I'm gonna do the SM7 on the kick drum. Then I'm gonna beef it up with some samples. Last night, I uh, I played around with this setup uh, quite a bit, and I tracked uh, one of the songs that I'm working on, and I really did not like how the overheads sounded. And the reason is uh, these fat heads are figure eight configuration, which means they take signal here and from here out in a figure eight pattern. Um, and I really have not done much uh, treatment to this room that I'm in and I'm getting a lot of weird reflections off the ceiling and all the corners. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch them out for um, my Mojave 201s, which are on my piano right now, and those are in a cardioid uh, pickup pattern. So um, I think if I put those lower down towards the drums, it's going to feel a little closer and a little less reverberated in this room. So uh, let's try that out. So the drums are all cleared out and I am now going to sit down and kind of edit these and kind of bring you into my process of editing drums, throwing some plugins on to make them sound fatter, fuller, all that stuff. And I'm going to kind of show you how I use samples as well. All right. So the first method I'm going to show you is going to be beat detective. So if you're in Pro Tools, uh, you hit Command 8. And that's going to bring up a little box that looks like this. Um, you're going to go to clip separation, capture selection, and analyze. Now you've got three settings here, enhance resolution, low emphasis, high emphasis. I'm gonna put it on high emphasis and I'm gonna hit analyze and it's got all of the transients selected. I think that Beat Detective is gonna work really well with this super simple drum beat. Now we're gonna separate. Now that's gonna make a cut at every one of these transients. And I also have it selected on eighth notes. So we're not getting you know all the 16th notes, just getting the eighth notes here. So I'm gonna hit separate. And then you go down here and hit clip conform and you can do strength. You can decide how much you want to conform them. I just do hundred percent because I like the tightness. And especially if we're just doing eighth notes, or even if you were doing quarter notes, you're going to have a little groove in your 16th notes. So I'm going to hit conform and that's just going to snap it to the grid. And I'm going to go down here and hit edit smoothing and I'm going to smooth. So that brings the end of the wave file to wherever the cut was made and it adds a five millisecond crossfade. All right, so let's listen to that. So that's, that's pretty tight. I don't know how we can do better, honestly. That's how I edit drums. Now, uh, I'll show you how I kind of use samples. I use trigger two, throw that on, I'll just duplicate the kick drum and the snare drum. And if I had toms on the setup, then I would add those in too. And I'm just gonna blend a little bit of a sample. So with the kick drum, let's listen to that. So it's pretty subby. Uh, 
It's also pretty punchy. It's not bad. Um, but I think we can give it a little bit more clarity uh, using a sample. Uh, so what I did was I used some of these uh, Dead 75 uh, drums here. And this is what the sample sounds like. And this is what they sound like together. Which is great. Uh, and then I did something similar with the snare drum. So this is what the snare drum sounds like without anything. So I do have uh, an EQ on here with quite a bit of highs boosted. Otherwise it's kind of boring. Uh, and then I doubled that and I've got trigger on with another circles uh, snare sample on there. And it's just a really fat, uh, short, dead snare sound that I really like. So when you add those together, So now let's listen to the entire kit all together. So that sounds pretty dang good uh, for being recorded right here in this fairly untreated room um, and four microphones uh, and a couple samples, really not a hard thing. I just really feel like uh, adding something real just really makes your work stand out. I produced bands for a long time and uh, that's kind of something that I look for. I want something that feels like a band. I want something that doesn't just feel like I, you know, put it together in the computer. Um, that's pretty much my philosophy on making any kind of music and um, it takes a little bit more effort but it's so worth it in the end. Uh, so yeah, this gives you an idea of how I record drums. Uh, I would love to hear how you do it. I would love to hear uh, any ideas that you have, how you would record drums in a small studio, or if you think it's worth it to go rent a studio every time. Um, but yeah, so if you liked this video, then give it a like, please. And if you want to see more of it, this kind of stuff, studio vlogs, tutorials, that kind of stuff, then please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I've got about 44 subscribers. You guys are awesome. And I would love to have some more. So come on, join the community, say what's up in the comments, or hit me up with an email. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Ask me any of your questions. I'd love to respond to those. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.